Hi. Um, okay. Um, well, good morning um, to um, all the women that are watching this um, Facebook Live video. Um, welcome. Um, anyone who knows me, um, my name is Louise Field, um, will understand that um, I'm totally technophobic. Um, and very camera shy. So this is quite a big deal for me. Um, so um, yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, any comments will be greatly appreciated. Um, as I'm particularly talking of a very personal experience um, to me. Um, so yes, um, I've got a few notes um, to help me get through my nerves as well. <laughs> um, okay, so Today, I'm going to be talking about the emotional implications of pelvic organ prolapse, also known as POP, um, P-O-P, pelvic organ prolapse. Um, prolapse is um, the descent of your bladder, your bowel, or your uterus from its normal anatomical position. How do I understand the emotional effects of prolapse? Because I've had a bladder and a bowel prolapse. Um, and that was after, it all came apparent after the birth of my twin boys. Um, unbeknown to me, my fascia um, within my um, pelvic floor had torn quite badly. And um, I was unaware of that. So that did weaken me um, in this area. Everyone will have their own experience with regards to the type of prolapse, your signs, your symptoms, and your emotional feelings surrounding all of that. Um, this is actually just my personal story. Um, I think it's important to share um, because the emotional aspects of um, POP, I just don't think is ever discussed. Um, and unless you've gone through um, this, you don't understand. Um, I'm here for women that are living with this situation um, or have lived with this situation. Um, and then maybe those that haven't got an understanding of pelvic organ prolapse, um, you'll have an understanding of how us women can feel. Um, the lead up to my, my pelvic organ prolapse, um, I've, I've had four pregnancies, um, the last being the twin boys. Um, I was very lucky to go full term, um, so I was very fortunate there. Um, all of my children, they've always been delivered very fast. Um, again, I've been very fortunate in that department, I've been very lucky. Um, I am a fitness professional and um, so then my job is physical. I um, also have to project my voice generally all day long. If it's not at work, it could be to the children. Um, and that in itself can put a um, downward load on the um, foundation of our core. The position that I was in after the twins were born, it was really rather hectic time of our lives. Um, my husband, he was working seven days a week. He um, works for himself and it's just the way it was at the time for him. He um, really had to commit to seven days a week. Um, if he did take a day off, he would have it off because he had a migraine. So he'd be in bed with the windows, or the curtains drawn, and hide his head under the covers all day. I had two grown-up sons, um, one of them all, all living at home, and um, we had a girlfriend in with us as well. I had my two-year-old boy, Charlie. Um, he was still in nappies. Um, in, to just top it all, we had a sick dog. So all in all, there was um, five, six, seven, eight of us in the house and a sick dog. Um, my feet didn't touch the ground whatsoever. Um, after the twins had been born, I waited nine months before I went back to work. Um, and with regards to my pelvic health, I didn't have any particular signs or symptoms um, to give me any indication of a prolapse. I knew that my vagina wasn't an 18-year-old vagina, but then I, was, um, I had the twins at 40 years old. Um, so I was going to get myself checked out when I had a smear done next, um, just to see what 
it was like up there, um, I, you know, I asked some professional advice. Um, but um, I just carried on with life as normal, juggling. Um, I finished work one evening and um, I sat down and I had my dinner. Um, when I stood up, that was when that moment of time that suddenly something occurred in me. Um, I, I just remember just stopping on that stand and taking very, very, very tiny, cautious steps straight to the bathroom, where I then um, checked myself out. Not something I do very often, but it seemed this was time to have a look with the mirror down there and see what on earth just happened. It was pretty obvious that things looked different and they felt different. Um, I, in my unprofessional, you know, I can't diagnose, but for looking at what I could see, um, to me it seemed really rather obvious that I had a pelvic organ prolapse of some kind going on. I made an appointment with the GP the very next morning um, and I um, was asked on the reception why I was making the appointment and so I said that I needed a diagnosis um, and a gynecological check with regards to um, possible possible pelvic um, organ prolapse. Um, I was then guided to the nurse um, and my appointment was a week later. In the meantime of that week I was scared. I was worried. The effects um, with regards to my job being physical, the effect of my day-to-day -day living, which was um, on my feet all day with the children, and then how I felt personally as a female. Um, I saw the nurse um, on examination. I said, can you, you know, inform me have I got a prolapse and what grade I'm at? Um, she said that she couldn't diagnose what grade I would be because she wasn't qualified in that area. So I was really desperate. I needed to know. I'd already waited a week, which isn't long with regards to appointments with the doctors. I understand that. But in my head, I'd been waiting a whole week. So I asked um, this poor nurse while she was down there, could she nod unofficially to, um, my, um, to the answer to my question? And so I said, is it a grade three prolapse? And she pulled her face and went, yes dear, that is. Um, and then her response to me thereafter was, knowing that I was a fitness instructor, um, so again, physical job, um, her response to me was that when you feel the need, my dear, um, make an appointment with the doctor. Um, okay, I'll just, sorry, um, tap on the viewer. Okay, I'm not sure where the viewer is, but hey. Um, oh, I didn't want to be messing around with all of this, my darling, so I'm just going to, um, oh, hello, Michelle. <laughs> um, oh, I think so, yes. Oh, hello, Michelle. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry, I'm digressing. Um, so, um, yes, the response um, was to make an appointment with the doctor when I felt the need. I had the need there and then. Um, I went to the reception and um, I was able to get my appointment for three weeks later. During that week, yes, I felt angry. I felt really angry. Um, what with? Myself, my body, I felt angry. Why me? Um, and also the other things I explained with the implications of my job and the family. Um, my job is, is the part of life for me. It, my job defines me as a person, Louise. Um, and um, how is this going to affect my job? Um, when the doctor saw me, um, they were happy to refer me. Yes, I had um, a grade three prolapse. Yes, I needed to see a consultant. Um, as it was, I chose to go private purely, not because I had the money, not at all. 
I had to work it in with my job, taking time off, recovery, um, and also I just wanted to see a consultant anyway, just to know the ins and outs, excuse the pun, of what exactly was going on. Um, while I was waiting for my consultation um, privately, how did it affect me again emotionally? It affected me um, because I could feel the prolapse all of the time. Whatever I was doing, I was aware of it. If I was in the shower and I washed down below, I, was, I could feel it. I could feel my organs that have descended. Um, I could feel my organs. I, you know, there's something sitting inside your vagina. So every step I took, I could feel my pelvic organ prolapse. As a woman, yes, it affected me um, as a female. Um, as a wife, the burden that I would put onto my family that needed me every minute of the day for every need, um, when I go in for the operation and for the recovery, because it's a long recovery, depending, obviously there's lots of different um, surgeries, not everybody goes for surgery um, and that's another subject in itself the types of surgery okay for me the surgery that I was going to need um, was to have a massive stitch up job on my fascia so I, again I was fortunate there because I wasn't having a mesh or any other foreign body put in there it was purely stitch up but nevertheless um, the recovery is similar to hysterectomy basically um, good 12 weeks, no six weeks driving, um, and then you have to build up your strength thereafter. Um, then with regards to my job, the time off I would need, I'm self-employed, so financially, um, and building my strength to get back to work as well. Um, the loss of my femininity, that, that was hard. It was hard. And none of... None of these things were ever addressed to me whatsoever. It was purely clinical, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a very practical kind of girl. I don't like to get upset. But I'm talking from the heart. <laughs> Um, none of these things were ever addressed to me. It was never um, addressed at all. I had pop. Um, it's um, not life-threatening. You carry on. You wait for the operation. Hope it goes well. You get on with your recovery and carry on. Um, as I said, it's not life-threatening, it's just very inconvenient. And I understand that. I totally understand that. Totally. And there's many things um, that people need the NHS for, um, or other medical conditions. There are, are a lot more serious. Absolutely. Um, but I still had to be able to complete my housework. I still had to look after my family. Um, the children were still babies, um, and again, Charlie, he was only two when they were born. Um, so, yeah, I had my responsibilities. My husband, he was really understanding, he was lovely. Um, and so too were my family, my closest friends, um, they were very supportive. Um, one aspect that my husband had to be supportive with was the fact that understanding um, that sex was just at a halt. Um, I just crossed my legs. It was a no-go area um, for me, personally. Um, when I did see the consultant later on, he did say to me, you can have sex. Now, um, I didn't experience pain with sex. Um, some ladies with pop do. Um, so again, it's an emotional, physical experience that you would have to make up your own mind on. Came to a halt for me because I just felt so unfeminine and again, my organs were quite low. It just didn't feel obviously the same. Um, 
I waited for a year to go ahead with the operation. Um, again, one of the reasons being due to work, I needed to fit in my recovery period with work. Um, and um, during that year, towards the date getting closer to the op, I did start to get some more signs and symptoms. You see, previously I hadn't had I, I had nothing to really give me any warning, um, apart from my history of knowing I'd had multiple pregnancies and I had a physical job. Um, but you start to realise, oh I love you too Michelle, thank you, um, I started to realise that um, I wasn't so fresh down there, that's a lovely another sign and symptom um, because the organs were so low, um, so there was that to deal with on a regular basis. Um, also, um, stress incontinence did start to uh, happen, even down, like just tripping over my feet, um, I'd have a whoops moment. Um, I started getting backache and I was getting that dragging feeling. Um, you know, um, those that haven't had prolapse or don't get this sign um, or symptom, it's, um, you know when you have a period and you feel like your innards are falling out, that dragging feeling, I was getting that. Um, and um, there's ways to help alleviate these symptoms, um, which will be another FB video, okay. Um, and so anyway, I had my op. Um, and again, as I said, I was very lucky um, because um, it was a, um, a stitch-up job. Um, and um, the physio, um, well, I had a five-minute chat and um, that was my physio. Um, again, remember I was going privately as well here. Um, it was me asking the questions, me asking for the physio and um, there, that's what I, I received. After my 16 week check, I was told that I could resume activity, um, that meant running, star jump, so I could just resume as normal. Um, but my, I have a very strong belief that um, I'd been manually fixed. This will always be my weaker area, um, and I needed to gradually build up my strength in this area, step by step. Um, Emotionally, I was terrified of reprolapsing. Um, I could feel my pelvic floor muscles react to absolutely every move I made. And even like down to the way I sat. It was good for the um, research for adore your pelvic floor because it just really brought it home to me how every breath has um, an impact on your pelvic floor how every step every bend your pelvic floor is reacting um, but I was terrified of reprolapsing um, and again I was lucky enough to know what I do to be able to implement those safety precautions um, and build up my strength I stayed um, with my mum, again, very fortunate for a week um, and um, on my post-op for my recovery. But then my maternal instincts drew me towards home because they needed me. Um, and um, so thereafter, I went back home. We were also due to move house. So there was lots of packing that needed doing. Now, I listened to all... I took this up very seriously. I listened to all of the... Um, recovery guidelines. Um, I took safe, active daily living, but then I still had um, my children to look after. Um, I had to tie up their shoelaces, help them get dressed, and bending over, nappy changing. There are ways, again, to um, implement the safest way um, to change nappies on a higher surface and, and things like that. Maybe the children could sit up on a few stairs while I tie up their shoelaces rather than me bend down to the floor um, and the way you hold yourself when you're doing the manoeuvre. Um, but daily life goes on and as much as you have to absolutely follow your um, post-op um, guidelines, um, I had to also look after my children. Um, women, quite often we see the need to others um, over ourselves, um, not always the best thing to do. Um, so 
I use my guidance that I have post-surgery um, for healing and building up strength. Um, over the last two years now, um, I have built up my strength um, in a good way. I feel confident with my pelvic floor, but I will never take my pelvic floor for granted, ever. Um, I TLC my pelvic floor, I give it the strength, I give it the relax, I, I don't abuse. Um, because, as I say, um, I've gone through this experience and um, it is possible to re-prolapse after you've had the operation. You're not necessarily safe. Um, and I've still got a long way to go. I'm 47 now, um, so I've got quite a few more years of looking after children, grandchildren if I'm lucky one day, and continuing with my job. Um, so I wanted to share my story with you purely for the reasons that I've said it's not talked about. It's always the clinical side. Um, and I think we do need to talk about the emotional side because it does affect your life. Um, Adore Your Floor isn't just here to educate, um, inform um, and to um, get over this taboo of silence with regards to pelvic health. But it is also here to support each other emotionally and that to me is extremely important. Um, women understand women. I love women. I think we're wonderful. Um, and I trust that as a group we can share and we can be open. This is a private group, so the women on here um, are only women that have attended the Adore Your Floor program. Um, and if we can be open and bring strength to others, I think that's all for the good. Um, I will add, remember, we have our pelvic floor specialist physio, um, Katrina Wade. You will see her link on the Adore Your um, Pelvic Floor page, and you'll see it on the members page, private group. I will put her link on there in a, in a moment. Um, if you ever do need to be checked out to have any questions answered, um, a diagnosis, or um, any any. any, any questions you might have up here um, that you need confirmed or you know addressed highly recommend her um, ultrasound um, female it's private appointment but it's not too expensive um, it's around the 65 pound but it will answer your questions um, so she's available she's in Colchester um, any comments from you, my darlings, would be greatly appreciated, um, and um, I do thank you for your time. Um, and I will see you again um, in this kind of format, um, and I will start talking about how you can help protect um, your, your organs if you are living with a prolapse, and um, also how you can maybe um, build yourself up um, post-operation. Um, our Adore Your Floor coaches have all this information they're trained they're specialist in teaching exercise and they pass this on to you you can always go back to your door your floor coach ask them questions you can feel free to ask me questions and i'll be happy to get back to you well that's all folks until next time have a nice day thank you bye bye